Hey, welcome back. Natasha here. Remember, in the last video, we went over all of the components you need to put your project together. So we talked about the strip of LEDs called NeoPixels, the brain microcontroller of the project called a microbit, and using a LiPo battery to power the whole thing. So in this video, we're going to put all of those components together. I'll start by showing you the easiest way, but then I'll also share some other options for those of you who want to branch out. Let's start by talking about batteries. The battery that I recommend for this project is at least a 500 milliamp hour LiPo battery. This one lasted about an hour and a half, running 30 LEDs at full brightness. This is the smallest one that I'd go with, but you could always get a larger capacity battery if you wish. These batteries come with this little JST connector, which is perfect because the micro bit has the JST jack right here. So all you have to do is plug it in, aligning the little raised ridge in the center I mentioned this in the last video, but it's worth mentioning again that these batteries have polarity. And if you notice on the outside here, it says 3V, and that should be next to the red wire. I have another battery here that is incorrect. This is a different brand of battery, and they make these for all sorts of applications. So there are batteries out there where the polarity is switched. So if I were to plug this in, I could hurt the micro bit, I, something could heat up, it's just a really bad idea to plug in a battery with the wrong polarity. So watch out and double check that the side that says 3V has the red wire when pushing in your battery connector. And if you end up with a battery that's wrong, write wrong on it so you remember. So this battery can actually give a little over four volts when it's fully charged, but the micro bit wants only three volts. So is this incorrect? Yes, it is incorrect, but I've been using it this way for several years and I haven't found any trouble with it when I'm tinkering with electronics. I like to think about the price of me being wrong is the price of the microcontroller, safety things aside. If you found this to be troublesome, let us know in the comments and try to be descriptive about what your exact situation is so we can all learn. Next up, let's talk about the micro bit itself. We'll be connecting the LEDs to the micro bit through these pins on the bottom. We saw that this is pin zero, pin one, pin two, 3V stands for power or three volts and GND stands for ground. So when we have our NeoPixel strip here, we have three wires coming out of it. The red wire is power, the black wire is ground, and then a third wire, which in this case is white, but sometimes they're all different colors, is the signal wire or the one that the data gets transferred over. So we want to connect our power to 3V, our ground to GND, and then we want to pick a pin to communicate our data over. In my case, I always like to use pin two because it's right next to ground and three volts. Uh, but it's also very common for people to use zero because that's the first pin. We'll connect ground, we'll connect power, and we'll connect our data pin using pin two. Just like that. So now we have a nice physical connection to our micro bit and to our LED strip. This represents the simplest version of the project, a power source, a microcontroller, and a strip of LEDs. I'm going to add two more things before we finish this. I'm going to add a case so that I have something to connect my Velcro to. And I'll also add Velcro to my battery. And now we can add this to our helmet. My plan is to put the micro bit in the back of the helmet and then run the LED strip around the base of the helmet. And now that my micro bit is connected to my helmet, I'm going to use some mounting tape to connect the LEDs. With my mounting tape on, I'm just going to press my LEDs onto the mounting tape. So now my LED strip is attached all the way around my helmet and 
I even have some extra. Now on every NeoPixel strip, there will be three copper pads with a line through them. That's a place where you can cut. So what I might do is cut on this one here because that will be one complete circle of my LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There we go. Just to keep this little guy in place, I'm gonna use a piece of duct tape because the two overlap slightly. This is the simplest build of the project. We have our battery, we have our micro bit in its case connected to the helmet via Velcro. We have our NeoPixel strip connected to the micro bit with the alligator clips it came with and connecting to ground, power, and pin two. The next step is connecting this to the computer and adding some code. Now, if you have these materials, you are good to go. You can jump to the next video now. But if you're interested in customizing your project, stay tuned. I have some alternate connections that you might wanna check out. If you want to connect other types of NeoPixels or expand upon this project, you'll need to know how to make your own connections. So did you ever have a friend who you like hanging out with but is completely exhausting? It's nice to have a way to unplug, right? And the same goes for NeoPixels. We can get ourselves into a situation where the pixels draw too much power, especially when we're experimenting with different animations and too many pixels. So we'll need a way to disconnect them before uploading new code. So the goal is to make a solid connection between our NeoPixel strip and our micro bit that can also be easily disconnected. One way to create a disconnection point is to use a three wire connector. If you purchased a five meter NeoPixel strip, your strip may come with one of these three wire connectors already. These are so common that you can sometimes even mix and match brands. You can also buy other three wire connectors like this waterproof one that I used in my bike build. To connect the micro bit side, you can create your own alligator clip connection, use screws and bolts, or you can solder to it directly which I don't recommend you do unless you never plan to use this micro bit for anything else. Another great option is an edge connector. Edge connectors slide over all the pins on the micro bit and are manufactured by many companies to expand what a micro bit can do. This simple one has holes just like the micro bit, allowing you to connect a NeoPixel strip directly while making it easy to slide the micro bit in and out. This one connects to motors, this one connects to Lego, these connect to breadboards, and more. To connect the wires to the NeoPixel strip, you can solder to the strip directly or use an LED strip clip. You'll need to find a match between the NeoPixel strip's pad size and the connector pins. I wanted to mention them for those of you who don't want to solder. I'll talk more about NeoPixel connections and soldering in the Exploring NeoPixels video later in the series. No matter what you chose for your connections, it's time to code these guys. So grab your computer, grab your USB cable, your dongle if necessary, and I will see you in the next video.